잠을 잊은 그대에게 애청자 여러분 안녕하십니까 뱅쿠버 부동산 시장 거센 파도를 지키는 여러분의 등대지기 이호기입니다 오늘 하루는 또 어떻게 마무리들을 하셨습니까 오늘 하루도 참 많이 수고하셨습니다 캐나다 지역의 산불 피해가 시간이 갈수록 커지고 있습니다. 옐로우 나이프는 2만 명 이상이 대피를 했고 캘로나에서는 비상사태를 선포했습니다. 산불 진화를 위한 인간의 노력이 최선을 다하고는 있지만 역부족입니다. 빨리 비가 좀 오고 산불이 진화되어서 이재민 포만 경제적 피해가 더 이상 발생하지 않기를 기원해 봅니다. 이런 가운데서도 참 분통이 터지는 소식도 있습니다. 다름 아닌 메타, 인스타그램과 페이스북으로 대변되는 메타의 정책 때문입니다. 메타는 올해부터 캐나다에서 뉴스 공급을 중단했습니다. 이 때문에 가장 시급히 알려야 할 바라 혹은 대비 소식을 캐나다인들은 전하지 못한다는 것입니다. 정보당국은 빨리 이 점도 아, 개선될 수 있도록 최선의 노력을 다해 보기를 희망해 봅니다. 오늘 준비한 내용은 일부에서 주장하는 캐나다 중앙은행이 금리를 동결하고 내릴 것이라는 주장이 얼마나 허망한 것인가에 관해서 한번 살펴보도록 하겠습니다. 그 기초는 지난 7월 12일 캐나다 중앙은행의 금융정책 보고서 발표 당시 티프 맥칼렘 총재의 발언 내용을 중심으로 살펴보도록 하겠습니다. 당시 기자회견 직전 티프 맥컬렘 총재의 모두 발언 전문을 텍스트로 첨부해 드릴 테니까 영어 공부하듯이 끝까지 지켜봐 주십시오. Thank you and good morning. I'm very pleased to be here with Senior Deputy Governor Carolyn Rogers to discuss today's policy announcement and our monetary policy report. Today, we raised our policy interest rate by 25 basis points to 5%. We are also continuing our policy of quantitative tightening. This decision reflects two broad considerations. First, monetary policy is working, but underlying, inflation, underlying inflationary pressures are proving more stubborn. We have made considerable progress in the fight against inflation. CPI inflation has fallen from a peak of 8.1% last summer to 3.4% in May. But even as headline inflation has come down largely as we forecast, underlying inflationary pressures are proving more persistent than we expected. Higher interest rates are needed to slow the growth of demand in the economy and relieve price pressures. Second, we are trying to balance the risks of under and over tightening monetary policy. If we don't do enough now, we'll likely have to do even more later. But if we do too much, we risk making economic conditions unnecessarily painful for everybody. We've come a long way and we don't want to squander the progress we've made. We need to stay the course to restore price stability for Canadians. It's a similar story in Canada. Growth has been surprisingly strong and the economy remains in excess demand. Consumer spending on services remains robust. And while spending on many goods that are typically sensitive to interest rates has slowed, it has not slowed by as much as we expected. The housing market has also seen some pickup in activity. Several factors appear to be supporting household spending. The labor market remains tight, even if there, there are some signs of easing. The unemployment rate has increased slightly, but remains historically low, and wage growth has been between 4 and 5%, higher than what is consistent with price stability. 
Many households also accumulated savings since the beginning of the pandemic. Some households have cut back on spending because inflation and higher interest rates have eaten into their budgets, and some are being severely squeezed. But for many, larger savings may be acting as a buffer and supporting consumer spending. Rapid, rapid population growth is contributing to both supply and demand in the economy. Newcomers to Canada are entering the labor force, easing labor shortages. But at the same time, they add to consumer spending and the demand for housing. Turning to inflation, while CPI inflation has fallen relatively quickly, much of the downward momentum has come from lower energy prices and base year effects as large price increases we saw last year fall out of annual inflation. We are still seeing large price increases in a wide range of goods and services. Our measures of core inflation, which we use to gauge underlying inflationary pressures, have come down, but not by as much as we expected. Three months rates of core inflation have been around three and a half to 4% since last September, suggesting little downward momentum in inflation. Consumer and business expectations for near-term inflation are moderating, but they're still high. And businesses are saying they are still increasing their prices more frequently than they did before the pandemic. Looking ahead, we continue to expect economic growth to moderate and inflation to ease but this will take longer than we forecast in January and April. As the global economy slows and higher interest rates work their way through the Canadian economy, we expect economic growth to average about 1% through the second half of this year and the first half of next year. This means the economy moves into modest excess supply in early 2024, and this should relieve price pressures. CPI inflation is forecast to remain about 3% for the next year before declining gradually to the 2% target in the middle of 2025. This is about six months later than we expected in April. Our decision to raise the policy rate reflected the persistence in both excess demand and underlying inflationary pressures, combined with our outlook for economic activity and inflation. The consensus among the governing council was that monetary policy needed to be more restrictive to bring inflation back to the 2% target. These decisions are difficult, and we did discuss the possibility of holding rates unchanged and gathering more information to confirm the need to raise the policy rate. On balance, our assessment was the cost of delaying action was larger than the benefit of waiting. Elevated inflation is a burden on Canadians, especially the most vulnerable. We are also acutely aware that higher interest rates are making life more difficult for many Canadians. And we know many Canadians are asking, is the Bank of Canada done raising interest rates or will rates need to go still higher to relieve inflationary pressures? The short answer is we will be taking each decision based on the available information at the time. What we can say is that monetary policy is working, and we know it will take more time for the full effects of past interest rate increases to work their way through the economy. With the increases in our policy rate in June and July, our outlook has inflation going back gradually to the 2% target. But several things need to happen for inflation to continue easing, and we are particularly concerned about two upside risks to the outlook. First, we have been surprised by the persistence of excess demand and underlying inflation in Canada and globally. We know that higher interest rates are having an impact, but how big their impact will be is uncertain. Second, with the downward momentum in inflation waning and our forecast suggesting inflation will be around 3% for the next year, we are concerned that the progress to price stability could stall and inflation could even rise again if there are upside surprises. As I said, we are trying to balance the risks of over and under tightening. If new information suggests we need to do more, we are prepared to increase our policy rate further. But we don't want to do any more than we have to. These decisions will be guided by our assessment of incoming data and the outlook for inflation. We need to see demand grow slow, wage pressures moderate, and corporate pricing behavior normalize.
We will also need to see near-term inflation expectations and measures of core inflation come down further. Let me conclude. The substantial drop in inflation over the past year is welcome news for Canadians. But monetary policy still has work to do. Our job is not done until inflation is centered on our 2% target. That's the level that helps the economy grow sustainably, restores competitive forces in the economy, and gives Canadians the price stability they need to budget and invest with confidence. And with that summary, the Senior Deputy Governor and I will be very pleased to take your questions. Thank you. 애청자 여러분 어떻습니까? 들어보시니까 조만간 기준금리가 내려갈 것 같습니까? 전혀 아닌 것 같지요? 제가 이 서두 발표문에서 가장 관심 있었던 표현은 이 표현입니다. 지금 노랗게 표현되어 있죠. 기다리는 이익보다는 늦장 대응의 비용이 더클것 같다. 기준금리 인상에 가장 먼저 반응하는 것도 주택시장입니다. 향후 주택시장의 가늠자는 바로 금리입니다. 오늘은 여기까지 하겠습니다. 준비한 음악은 바리톤 최현수가 부릅니다. 옛 동산에 올라. Oh, mm-hmm.